Question 1. In what way does your media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? In my media product I use many conventions of existing film openings. For example, I developed the convention of displaying the production company's logo at the beginning of the opening sequence. The very first shot of my film opening is a blacked out screen with the credit and Archer Street production show shown in the centre. The font is quite uniform and is purposely white to stand out against the black background, showing its importance. There is no logo for this particular production company and after researching into its existing films I found that they usually have an Archer Street production written as text in the credits and made to fit in with the colour scheme and design of the film. The font and title design I have created uses conventions of existing films from the drama romance genre. You would expect the titles of drama romance films to be quite girly and almost have a handwritten style. However, through some research I found that many of the title designs are quite plain and uniform. For example, in the films Dear John and Titanic. As you can see, I chose to use this convention in my own film. It is conventional of all films to have short titles, however, drama romance genre films often have one-word titles that link to the film in some way, for example, Titanic. I chose to use this convention in my media product. I wanted my title to be dramatic and to stand out, and so I came up with a list of possible titles for my film, and then went through the process of elimination. Lost was one of our film title op options, but we could not use it as it is already an existing title of a television series. Another one of our options was colourless, which is a word that is repeated in the monologue at the beginning of our film, and so we thought it would link the title and the film together. However, this was the only link to the film that the title had, so we felt it was unsuitable. We finally decided on intention as our film title, as it is catchy and has a significant link to the storyline, without giving too much away to the audience. There is an establishing shot straight after my production I'll company is shown in my film, which is very conventional of a yeah, film opening. Okay. The establishing shot, which is of water flowing, setting the location. This setting is quite typical of a drama romance genre film, as the water along with the voiceover and music creates a reflective atmosphere. However, it is unconventional that this is the very first location the film is set in. Usually, there is a reflective setting and mood later on in the film, but I chose to use it at the beginning as it sets the scene for the rest of it, showing that the film will be him reflecting back on things in the past. My film fits into the drama romance film genre. Romantic drama films usually revolve around an obstacle preventing two people from being together or bringing the two people together. Romance films make the romantic love story or the search for love and romance the main plot focus. Typically, there is a male and a female in these films. Often there is a point when the two characters are a couple, whether at the beginning, middle or end of the film, and there is often a point when they are apart. My film opening obviously suggests it is from this genre as it shows the male character being apart from the female at the beginning. His words in the voiceover, for example, when he says, I need you, and their conversation in the bedroom shows that there is a problem with their relationship. The very first character we are introduced to is the male character Dan Boren. The fact that he is the very first character we see almost immediately as the film starts shows that he is the main character of the film. We see him sat on a wall at a river with an empty bottle of wine next to him. This suggests something about his character to the audience. The empty bottle of wine suggests he has drunk it, and the fact he has drunk it alone suggests that he is probably upset, angry, or something is bothering him. This is reinforced by the whole atmosphere of the opening of the film. For example, the voiceover is the male character speaking his thoughts, almost in letter form to the female character making him feel this way. In these shots, his face is turned away from c the camera, which contrasts with his extreme openness with the audience in the voiceover, suggesting he is a confusing character that the audience may struggle to understand at first. I purposely wanted the audience to feel confused by this character, as it puts them in his shoes in a way. Dan is a very troubled character. Obviously, he is considering suicide, and I wanted the audience to feel his confusion and sense of being lost in order to help them relate to the character later in the film. The second and final character we are introduced to is the female character, Kate Stenner. There is a close-up shot showing that the piece of paper the male character is holding is a photograph of Kate. This close-up has purposely been used as it tells the audience that not only is this photograph important to the character of Dan, but also the character we see in the photo plays a significant part in the film. This is enforced when the female a female's actor name appears on screen, telling the audience that they should expect to see her again in the film, which they do. This shot is a high-angle shot showing the male and female character lying on a bed. 
The music and voiceover stops here, making their conversation more dramatic, and the sudden change of location and sound catches the audience's attention, making them listen and watch more intently. There is then a sequence of close-up and two shots, showing the male and female character throughout their conversation. The two shot reinforces their relationship, showing they are together, which is conventional of drama romance genre films, as they often have to show links between characters. The close-ups allow the audience to see who is talking and see the facial expressions and reactions of both characters. As the scene in the bedroom finishes, the music starts again as we cut back to the original location showing only the main character sat on the wall. We see him rip up the photograph and throw it into the river. The camera then cuts to a close-up of the river with the remains of the photograph being carried through and then out of shot by the flowing river. The slow moving paper works extremely well to, with the voiceover as there is a pause as the paper moves. This makes his final three words, I need you, more dramatic as it builds up slightly. As the paper flows out of shot, the title appears on screen. Question two. How does your media product represent particular social groups? In a romance film, a stereotypical female is usually popular, pretty and confident and does stereotypically girl things such as going shopping, wearing lots of makeup and fashionable, brightly coloured clothes. She would often have a male interest. The female character in my film opening is called Kate Stenner. She subverts the audience's expectations of a female character, much like the character of Bella Swan in Twilight. Neither of them are dressed in high fashion clothes and they wear dark colours. Kate is wearing a grey hoodie in my film opening. The colour grey usually connotes dullness and boredom, however, it is also an industrial colour, connoting security and reliability. I purposely chose this colour as it reflects her relationship with the character of Dan. He sees her as his safe harbour. This again is reflected in the dialogue when she almost comforts Dan, retaliating with something positive when he asks negative questions. This also makes her character challenge female stereotypes, as the female is often seen as the weak one, whereas in my film she seems to have more knowledge and seems more stable than my main character Dan. Both Kate and Bella Swan do not wear a lot of makeup and their hair is natural. I took particular care when choosing my actress to play Kate as I wanted to make sure she didn't fit the typical stereotype of women. Usually female characters are stick thin and made up, whereas Kate Stenner is curvier and this along with her faded pink hair gives her an edge. Drama films depend mostly on in-depth but development of relatable characters dealing with emotional themes. Dramatic themes such as alcoholism, drug addiction, moral dilemmas and infidelity often put the characters in conflict with themselves, others and society. My main character, Dan Boren, fits this role in me extremely well, which I did purposely. His suicidal thoughts and the whole monologue show that he is this type of character. Stereotypically, the male characters are shown to be stronger than the females, which is not what Dan does. He's a bit lost and confused in his own mind and needs the female character Kate to answer some of his questions. He wears black throughout nearly the whole of the opening sequence. Black connotes death and mystery. Death links to his suicidal state and mystery links to his state of mind and the audience's initial impression of him. His character is overall quite stereotypical of a drama romance film as his state is expected due to his circumstances in the film. Question 3. What kind of media institution might distribute your media product and why? To decide what kind of media institution would distribute my film, I have researched into three different institutions. Firstly, I looked at Warner Bros. Warner Bros is an American producer of film, television and music entertainment. It is very well known and has distributed films such as the Harry Potter series, Sherlock Holmes and Slumdog Millionaire. I would not choose Warner Bros to distribute my film as this is a very large company that distributes big films, whereas my film is small and low budget. Secondly, I looked at 20th Century Fox. 20th Century Fox is one of the six major American film studios as of 2011. The studio is a subsidiary of Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. Again, this is a very well-known company that has distributed some very famous films, such as Star Wars, Home Alone and X-Men. I would not choose 20th Century Fox to distribute my film, as again, it distribu distributes big films, whereas my film is small and low budget. Lastly, I looked at Archer Street Productions. Archer Street Productions is a small, independent production company that produces low-budget films in the UK. I have decided that I would choose Archer Street Productions to distribute my film, as I think it is the best option. It produces low-budget films which are similar films to mine, such as Girl with a Pearl Earring, which is also from the drama-romance genre. 
There is not a logo for my chosen production company, and through my research I have found that in their films they display their name as text to fit in with the rest of the title designs for that particular film. I chose to do this as well, as you can see it says Archduke Productions at the very beginning of my film in a font similar to the rest of the titles and that fits in with the colour scheme. The titles at the beginning of a film often have a specific order to them, usually an order of importance. A typical order of titles is the production company first, followed by the director, then the major starring actors, then the actual title of the film. Sometimes, if there is a very well-known actor or actress starring in the film, their names may appear first before the director's. In my film, I use the conventional order of titles, the production company, the director's names, then the starring actors and finally the title of the film. I chose to put the director's names before the starring actors as they are not well-known famous actors due to this being a low-budget independent film. Our film is aimed at 16 to 22 year olds, although I was uncertain as to whether to certify our film as a 12 or a 15, so I researched into film certifications in order to establish what certificate was most suitable for our film. From my research, I found that 12 films contain moderate language and sex and violence may be discreetly portrayed in the films. I then found that films that are certified as a 15 can contain a lot of strong language, sex and violence. Also, they can include drug and alcohol use on a more detailed level to a 12 certified film. After researching these two film certifications, I have decided that I am going to certify our film as a 15. I think this is the most suitable certification due to the theme of suicide and the presence of alcohol in the opening of our film. Question 4. Who would be the audience for your media product? The target audience for our film is 16 to 22 year olds, as this is around the age of the characters in our film, so the audience will be able to relate to them. Our film has aspects in it that will appeal to both males and females. For example, the romantic side will appeal to females. My target audience are likely to be average teenagers. The females will be the stereotypical girls that like to sit down and watch romantic films and daydream about relationships while eating a pot of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. They will enjoy the relationship aspects of this film, watching with the hope of a happy ending. However, I think my film also appeals to a wider variety of people, both male and female, opening up to perhaps a more gothic and emo audience. Question 5. How did you attract or address your audience? One way that I made my film appealing to my audience was through the characters. The characters in my film were around the same age as my target audience, making them relatable to, as they could possibly have the same thoughts and feelings as my audience. Also, the romance aspect of the film puts my characters in a situation that could be relatable to my target audience. It is typical of a drama romance genre film to be based around a relationship, and so this is likely to be the main reason an audience would watch this genre of film. It is what they would expect. Therefore, the theme of relationships in my film would attract my audience. By being able to relate to the situations in my film opening, my target audience are likely to connect with the characters. The fact that there is a male and female character in my film attracts both a male and female audience. I wanted my audience to have similarities to my characters, and so I chose to use both genders in my film opening. Emo is a style of rock music, and the fans of that music have been given the name Emos by society. The music they listen to is often filled with expressive confessional lyrics. The confessional expressive monologue in my film opening will appeal to this particular group of people, also, the theme of suicide will appeal to this audience. As I have said before, romantic drama films usually revolve around an obstacle preventing two people from being together or bringing the two people together. Romance films make the romantic love story or the search for love and romance the main plot focus, which is what happens in my film. Often illness is the obstacle in romantic drama films, which is the case in my film. Depression and suicide is an ob obvious factor in the problems of the relationship shown between the two main characters. Which is mu this is much like in the film The Vow, starring Channing Tatum and Rachel McAdams. The illness of the wife in the film makes their relationship almost fall apart, but the husband struggles throughout the whole film to get their life back to the way it was. Although the very beginning of my film opening suggests the reason for the character of Dan to be considering suicide is due to a breakup or a rough patch between him and his partner Kate, the conversation they have in the bedroom scene reveals that perhaps suicide and depression was a problem from the start, making the illness the obstacle in the film. This will attract my audience as it is similar to The Vow, when a well-known film that is quite successful. If they enjoyed that film, they are likely to want to watch my film too. Question 6. What have you learnt about technologies from the process of constructing this product? 
From the process of constructing this product, I have learned that continuity is extremely important in filmmaking. As cinematographer, I had to make sure that all props and costumes were exactly the same at all times in order to make sure no mistakes were shown in my film. This was quite simple at times, but at other times it was difficult. For example, making sure both my actors stayed in the exact same position when lying on the bed in the bedroom scene and moving at the correct points each time we filmed was especially important so my partner could match up the action when editing. Also, this was not our original idea. After a lot of discussion, my partner and I both agreed to change our idea due to the immense amount of actors we needed to organise in order to film our opening sequence. We realised that it would not be possible to, for us to get all of our actors in one place at one time in order to film our, our chase scene idea. It was too complicated to film within the time limit. With the amount of actors we needed for our original idea, it was too complicated to be able to fit all the characters in with different exciting angles while using just one camera. I learnt that camera angles are extremely important and sometimes difficult to get right in order for them to fit with a particular genre and storyline. In my case, we did not have enough time to film all of the actors and shots that we needed in order to make our film look realistic and professional. I used a tripod in the process of constructing my film opening, which I used in order to make sure the camera was level and stable at all times. I also used other technologies such as Blogger, YouTube, Windows Movie Maker and Defont.com, Slideshare.net and Vimeo. All of these technologies were extremely useful in planning my media product and creating it. Question 7. Looking back at your preliminary task, what do you feel you have learned in the progression from it to full product? I feel my work has become more professional and my planning more thorough. With my preliminary task, I was a lot less organised and so when it came to filming, a lot was made up on the spot. Whereas with this task, I made sure I was pr fully prepared to film so that I knew exactly what I was doing. Also, in the preliminary task, we left filming very late and so the editing suffered as a consequence due to lack of time. So me and my partner made sure for our final film opening, we left plenty of time to film and edit to the highest standard we could achieve. Many aspects of filming have become more important to me since the continuity task, for example the 180 degree rule. Usually this is only ever broken to show disorientation or to make the audience feel uncomfortable. In my film I break the 180 degree rule when the character Dan is sat on the wall at the river. Although it was used out of context, it fits in well with the confusion of Dan's state of mind and adds to the audience not knowing what to make of Dan which is what I wanted to achieve.